Hey Data Junkies, welcome back again to our next lecture video on the one-way ANOVA analysis of variance. And we're going to go ahead and keep moving this forward. In this particular lecture video, we're going to be discussing the Welsh ANOVA and the non-parametric version of the ANOVA called the Kruskal-Wallis test. So let's go ahead and advance our continuation of the one-way ANOVA, but let's start that talk with a little bit of a flashback, a little bit of a recap. Let's start back about the Welsh. Not that long ago, we were talking about t-tests, and in t-tests we said that there were a couple different varieties that you could do, specifically in the independent samples, or two sample independent t-tests, there were a couple kinds that we could work on. The primary version, the regular version, is what we called student's t, or just the, when we colloquially say t-test, the one that we're referring to. However, there was another version called Welsh's t-test, and that one was introduced as a variation of the student's t that we could use when we had unequal variation of the two different groups that we were comparing. So student's t wanted equal variation. Unequal variation means we had to tweak the formula a little bit in order to compensate for that unequal variation. And we primarily saw it in the degrees of freedom. We had fewer degrees of freedom in the Welsh's t compared to the student's t. Now, we already know that one of the major assumptions for the one-way ANOVA is that we have relatively equal variance between the different groups that we're comparing. So this is the same sort of assumption that you had with the t-test. We're just building on it and applying it to the one-way ANOVA as well. And we showed you that you could use the Levine test as a technique and tool to help you compare the variation between these different groups. And it had a null and alternative hypothesis. And if you were to reject the null hypothesis of the Levine's test, it would tell you that you indeed have variances that are unequal to each other and that you should be using the Welsh ANOVA. So the Welsh is ANOVA, which is short for Welsh one-way ANOVA. I'm just shortening it to Welsh ANOVA for our little conversation here. But the Welsh ANOVA works very similarly to the Welsh's t-test. Given the same, they have the same name, it's a good thing to help keep in mind, and it'll keep it easier for you as well. Now, something to keep in mind here that's a little bit different is that I showed you before that you have the AOV function for ANOVA, and you have the one-way dot test version for the ANOVA. Welsh's ANOVA only works with the one-way dot test version. And kind of like the t-test its predecessor, there's an option inside oneway.test, just like there was with t.test, that allows you to turn the Welsh feature on and off. In t.test, for the t-tests, the default setting was to have var.equals false as the default, which gave you the Welsh's t-test. If you were to add that option into your function, var.equals true, it would turn off Welsh and turn on the student's T. The same exact thing is going to apply for Welsh's ANOVA. The oneway.test function will give you Welsh's ANOVA by default, and when you run it with the option var dot equals true, then you turn off Welsh and you should get the classic one-way ANOVA that you would get with the AOV function. So just keep those uh, in your back pocket for what you're going to need. Now let's go ahead and see an output for the Welsh's ANOVA in action so we can go ahead and compare the two. Continuing with our uh, little talk about where we have some data set that you're going to be using for your labs here with the Star Wars fan data survey that was put out there, there was the variable that says how many Star Wars films have they seen and looking at the different types of Star Wars fans that, and Star Trek fans and, and things, like, things like this to check them out. Now if we plug these into the AOV function and do a summary on it, we go ahead and get the classic one-way ANOVA with an F value of 1.34 that is highly statistically significant. If I take those same variables and put it into the oneway.test, and I'm not doing any specifications out in here, I'm just going with the standard default settings on the oneway.test, it gives me a one-way analysis of means, and it tells me I have an F score of 107.85. Now that 107.85 is smaller than our previous F value of the 139. Part of that is due to, in fact, that the Welsh's ANOVA is adjusting the residuals degree of freedom, or the within degrees of freedom. In the standard AOV, we had 824, and that's been downsized to 
there's stuff going on in the math in R underneath, in the math machine, that is using those degrees of freedom to help us compensate for the fact that we have these unequal variances and it's making it more conservative and it's making it harder for us to get a higher F score which would then help us get a smaller P value to help determine our statistical significance. So by downgrading our residual degrees of freedom, our within degrees of freedom, it is making our mean squares within smaller, which is then making our F score adjusted as well. So it has this sort of cascading effect through the calculations. Now note when you're looking in the one-way dot test with the default settings, that in the little descriptor up there, it will tell you not assuming equal variances. So you can tell when you're looking at these outputs if it has the Welsh active or not. It, unlike the t-test, it doesn't tell you Welsh in the output title. So you'll have to look for that identifier flag that says not assuming equal variances or assuming equal variances. Now some disadvantages of using the one-way dot test uh, compared to the AOV is the function, the objects that it saves as. Right. With the AOV function, if we save it as another object, it the class of it, if you run a class command or a structure command, it would tell you that it's an AOV and an LM, where LM is short for linear model. We're going to get to those more when we get to regression. But if you save the one way dot test as an object, it saves as an H test, which for the purposes of what we're getting into here, we don't have to worry necessarily about what the H test class object is, but they store different attributes than an AOV or an LM class. And when it has different attributes, I showed you on a previous slide what those differences in the attributes are, we can't use the Tukey HSD function on it. Because we can't use the Tukey HSD function, we aren't able to go ahead and get uh, the sort of pairwise testing with the mean differences and things like that that the Tukey HSD would normally give us. Now, that doesn't mean we're completely in the dark here when it comes to post hoc testing we can still use another function called pairwise.t.test instead of tukeyhsd. And what that's going to do, it's going to give you a slightly different output. It's going to give you a matrix of p-values. And you can look at the intersection of each of those and get a determination of which paired group differences were statistically significant from each other, which ones were and which ones were not at your different levels of alpha. And inside the pair.t.test function, we use an adjustment now, it doesn't have two key in there, but it has one of the alternatives. And that alternative is called Bonferroni. And Bonferroni is just another way that it's using to help adjust for our p-values to compensate to make sure we're not getting the sort of alpha inflation. It's a more conservative estimation than two key. So it's going to be a little bit harder to get statistically significant p-values depending on the types of the data that you have in the, in the difference testing. Now it doesn't, the, the pairwise.t.test does not tell you the mean differences like Tukey does. So if you want to go ahead and still run an AOV on the Tukey to just look at the mean differences, you can still go ahead and do so, but you can't trust the p-values that come out of it, okay? Just look at it for mean differences if you want, but otherwise look at the pairwise.t.test to get your p-values to find out which ones were significant or not and go from there.